That smells so good. Hey, today we're gonna to make pão doce, Portuguese sweet bread. And this is seen throughout Portugal from Lisbon to the islands of Madeira, to the islands of Azores. Pretty simple, we'll get to it. All right, first thing we wanna do is heat up some of the milk to get our yeast rehydrated. I have the two and a half cups of total milk we're using in the recipe. I'll take out about a half a cup. I'll heat this up to about, ideally is between about 105 and 115 degrees Fahrenheit. The main thing is you don't want it to be above 130 because you can kill your yeast. They are a living organism. And then with the sugar, the total, from the total sugar we're gonna use, I'll put a pinch in there. That gives the yeast something to feed on. I'll dump our yeast right into there. You could give that a stir. And within about 10 minutes, this yeast should start to bubble up, showing its activity. I'm going to warm up the milk and melt the butter and the shortening in the milk. Shortening, if you don't have shortening or you don't want to use vegetable shortening, do an equal amount of butter. So instead of a half cup of butter and a half cup of shortening, you could do one cup of butter and no shortening. Wow, look, look at this, this yeast. I don't, I don't even think it's been five minutes and it's going vigorously, which is a good sign. All right, the next step in the process is mixing eggs and sugar together. So now I measured out flour. And this won't fit in my KitchenAid mixer to knead it, but you can, if you do a half batch, it'll probably fit in the mixer if you want to do it that way. One tablespoon of salt. And the yeast, which is about to overflow, we'll get that in there. The shortening and the butter have melted, so I'm gonna take that off the heat. This is at 100, 200 degrees. So if I pour this into the bread right now, I risk killing the yeast and you do not want that. So take it off. Ideally, hopefully you have a thermometer. If not, it should be warm to the touch, but not hot. And I would not mix it in unless it's below 120. We'll zest the lemon. It's already smelling fantastic. Give this a mix. The milk butter shortening temperature dropped below 130, it's at 120, so now it's safe to put into the yeast flour mixture. So you could start kneading this right away at this point, and you either could do a couple things here. If you have one of these round like scrapers, you could knead it just like this. Just keep on kind of grabbing it, pulling it, and throwing it over itself. Or you could get your hands a little dirty, and I kind of grab it from the bottom, pull up, grab from the bottom, pull up. And you can see I'm spinning the bowl as I'm doing this. Again, if you made a half batch, you probably just could put this in your KitchenAid with a kneading hook and knead it for probably 10 minutes on a low speed. And this is developing gluten. And you can see the consistency, it's definitely very sticky dough. So I've been kneading by hand for about probably five, six minutes. And just to get an idea of the consistency, See, it shouldn't run out like batter, but it's definitely still a very wet, sticky dough. What you want to do now is allow it to double in size. This is what they call bulk proofing. And depending on temperature of your house, this could take anywhere from like two hours to four hours. You can leave it in this same vessel and just cover it with saran wrap. So you can see after putting it in this container, I'm right at the two liter mark. I want to let it proof until it gets to the four liter mark. Ideally, again, for proofing between like 78 and 85. A lot of times I'll turn on the oven for just a few seconds. I use a thermometer like this one. This is a barbecue thermometer where I can know how accurately the temperature of my oven. So I'll put this in my oven 
turn it on, I'll count to 30, turn it off, and usually that's enough to get my oven to about 90 degrees, and then I, that turns into my proofing box and it just sits in there. Don't leave the oven, count to 30, turn it off, and that makes a perfect proofing box for me. Other options, put a container like this in their oven, they'll boil a gallon of water in a pot and stick that in right next to this container, and just the radiant heat coming off of that gallon of boiled water is enough to make a nice proof box, especially if your house is cold. I do have some other breads if you're interested. I have buldukaku and also popsik. if you care to make those breads. All right, our bread has been proofing for about four hours and 15 minutes. Ambient temperature around the bread was about 75 degrees. Count on your bread taking that long. A little pet peeve, I think a lot of bread recipes exaggerate how quickly proofing takes place. I have a feeling maybe they do that so the recipe seems like, oh, people will choose this recipe because it you can make it faster. but. There's no cheating this part of baking. So baking a yeast bread, allow at least eight hours total time. And again, ideally, if I wasn't doing this for a video, either right away in the morning, start it, you know, have everything ready, or if you do this the night before, eight to nine hours while you're sleeping, that'd be great too. Wow, that's, <laughs> that smells so freaking good. Mm, man, it's nothing like yeast. And, yeah, this is at 78 degrees Fahrenheit. So today, since I was doing a time lapse out here, I use this little space heater. That's pretty warm, 78 degrees. Like if this is 10 degrees cooler, it'd probably take another two hours of proofing, just to keep that in mind. So this is probably as quick as it's gonna go, just about as four, over four hours. And it could take as long as six to nine, depending on how cool your environment is. You could use many different sizes of pans. When buttering a pan like this, I just think there's, there's no reason to, to skimp on the butter or spray oil because you want it to come out easily. You don't want this, after doing all this work, you don't want to have it sticking to the bottom. There you go, that's buttered very liberally. Okay, now we're going to punch down, deflate our, our dough and get it ready to shape it and put it in the pan to get it ready for its second proofing. Put the flour down there. Dust it for a little bit of flour. And then if you have a bench scraper, it makes it a little easier. And this is still gonna be a sticky dough. You're, you're not trying to make it not sticky by putting a lot of flour. The flour is just helping to make it a little more manageable. See, it's definitely still sticking a lot to the bottom. That is normal, it's supposed to be that way. So I just kneaded it for about five minutes. I'll divide the dough in half and put it in our baking pan. You want this to fill up about half the pan. But now we let them proof. Same thing until about double in size. Now I'm gonna use a little bit of cooking spray just over the top of this, just in case it rises up and touches the plastic wrap. And if you like these videos and want to see more, please hit subscribe and click the notification button because that way when a new video comes out, you'll be notified about the video. Since we put the dough in the pans, it's been about three hours. So the second proofing was three hours. The first bulk proofing was about four hours and 15 minutes. Yeah, that dough is at 78 degrees. Fahrenheit, so that's pretty warm. If your house is cooler than 75, this could take another two hours. And I'd rather, again, be patient because it's just an important step to get bread done correctly. Over here, I have an egg wash. An egg wash, some beaten egg white. So it's one egg white with about one tablespoon of water mixed in, and it just provides a nice shine to the top of the bread. It's kind of traditional in this bread. So you just kind of put that over. Try not to get too, too much of the egg wash like against the pan because you don't want it to seize up and hinder what they call the oven spring, the rising of the bread. Brush that over nicely and don't press down too hard because you don't want to deflate the dough at this point. Okay, now we'll put it in the preheated oven. Or because this bread has so much sugar in it, you do not want to bake it at too high of a temperature because, you know, around 340, 350, that's the temperature sugar caramelizes and the bread could get too dark. See, that's at 194, that is done. All right, our breads are done cooking. It took about 40 to 45 minutes to cook. 
Get the proper internal temperature for enriched breads. You want to cook them to 190 degrees Fahrenheit. Put an instant digital read thermometer in there, and when it gets to 190, it's done. Both of these went in at the same time. This bread actually cooked a little bit quicker, maybe five, 10 minutes quicker. Because this middle part is hollow, it's also cooking from the interior out. So really beautiful color. I think that's perfect golden. This one, again, most of these could get dark because the amount of sugar in there. Oh, the other difference too, this, this cake here I had in a sheet pan, so it might have deflected some of the heat and made it more even, because this one I felt like got, it's not bad, usually this is kind of how they turn out, but I think maybe if I put cake pan on top of the sheet pan, then put it in the oven, then it might lead to better even cooking throughout. And I uh, appreciate you joining me. You know, go cook with someone you love. That smells so good.